back. Tom Hartman here with you. It's our Middays with Mark Hour. Congressman Mark Pocan taking your calls on the topics of the day. And Dan in Oceanside, California, you are on the air with Congressman Pocan. Thank you. Tom, I love everything you do. Congressman, thank you for spending the time with us. There's a HR Bill 2366, which would allow uh, being able to discharge this student loan through bankruptcy once again. Is there any chance of that ever seeing the light of day? Um, Dan, uh, thanks for uh, your question. Um, <sighs> You know, this is an issue that I don't quite understand um, why there's a disconnect between the parties, because to me, some of the stuff around student debt should be a, a no brainer. You know, I, I introduced the first bill back in 2013 to allow people to refinance student debt. People are paying 6.6% interest when the current rate was around three, three and a half percent. And it just doesn't make sense that you can refinance your home and your car, but not your student loan. Uh, some of these other issues, uh, like you brought up, uh, HR 2366 and some other measures, should be pretty much nonpartisan, no brain or, you know, if, if people do get a higher education, the odds are they're going to make more money, which means they're going to pay more taxes. And there's a lot of benefits to it. Yet for some reason, it's been really hard to get people on the other side of the aisle to join in. Now, Elizabeth Warren has done a refinancing bill. Senator Gillibrand from New York has done a, a refinancing bill. Mine is the only one that does have some bipartisan support, but I think we're only talking three or four Republicans um, on the bill. It's it's just been difficult, Dan, and I don't quite know why that they're seeing this as a disconnect. I know some of the rhetoric that I used to hear on the budget committee around this was that um, you know they just don't want everyone following the path of college, and we know not everyone does. 30% of uh, people do, and the other 70% don't, but I don't understand why this issue hasn't been something that to gain more support. So I, I wish I had a better answer for you, Dan, because it doesn't make sense to me either. Michael in Troy, New York. Hey, Michael. So you're on the you're on the air with Congressman Pocan. Uh, thanks, uh, Tom. Uh, long time listener, first time caller, and Congressman Pocan. Uh, great to talk to you. And I actually retweeted your comment about the wall earlier today. Uh, my question has to do with agency confirmation and Senate confirmations. Um, we're hearing speculation that the president might move um, one secretary from one uh, agency to the other. And I guess I'm confused. Is there a blanket approval that once you're approved for one department head, you can easily be moved? Or will this require additional confirmation by the Senate? And uh, how does that not, you know, what about their qualifications if they're going from uh, vastly different agencies? I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Yeah, Michael, great question. And, uh, you know, I actually listened to part of yesterday's press conference where um, the the press person reiterated that uh, they would not be moving Jeff Sessions to Homeland because that was one of the speculation, right? And then there also was another speculation. They said that they didn't know if there was a move in works. You know, the question is, I think, a fear that he'll try to do a recess appointment while people are out and put someone in. But, you know, there's supposed to be a confirmation process. I don't think you can automatically go from one to another. That's why, you know, you still would have to have normal Senate confirmation. But what we're really watching, and we all should be watching, is that he does anything to pull Jeff Sessions from Attorney General so he can put someone else in who could fire uh, Mueller, who's doing a really, I think, great job on the investigation he's working on. So well, That's the that, theory, isn't it, that he's going to move Sessions from, from um, you know, to, re to replace uh, Kelly over to DHS? They us, yeah, they gave us a, a, a yesterday in the, the press um, briefing, and, and a, a, usually, you know, they give you a wiggle room on it. This one was no wiggle room, that it's not going to happen, they're saying. But again, mm. with this administration, I don't trust much of what they say. Yeah. So that's what we're really watching, because I, I know he is desperate to um, put someone in as attorney general who will get rid of Mueller, again, because of the Russia investigation. Yeah, indeed. Mark, uh, Mike, excuse me, Mike in El Paso, Texas. You're on the air with Congressman Mark Pocan. Hi, Tom. Uh, hi, Congressman. Uh, I want to say thanks to both of you for serving the public so well as you do uh, and speaking up for the truth. Uh, thanks. Congressman, I just uh, I just wanted to know, it just seems like with every day we have more and more volumes of things coming forth about the corruptness and the uh, criminality of this uh, of this president. And uh, I know Bob Mueller is a good man, and he is uh, utilizing all the tools at, at his disposal to try to uncover everything, but... You know, there may be so much you might not ever get to the end of it. So I guess my question is, when are we going to have enough where we're going to actually start seeing either impeachment proceedings or, in my view, better yet, 
criminal indictment before this guy can continue to advance his uh, his agenda even further, which is seems to be headed for uh, calamity. Yep, Mike, uh, great questions. Um, let me say it this way. Uh, we're going to need the Republicans to put their country before their party in order to do something while they're in control. Um, quite honestly, Paul Ryan uh, needs to grow a spine. Um, he has, he used to stand up to uh, the president during the campaigns, and now you know he rolls over and gets his belly rubbed, and that seems to be where we're at with the House of Representatives' leadership. To get something like impeachment, um, to really get what this independent counsel that we want, you're going to have to have Republicans step up to do that. And it may be that if we can't get to that crucial point where he just pushes them over the edge, uh, we have the November 18 elections coming up. And I think there's a reason why we have Democrats announced in over 200 of the Republican districts already, and they have Republicans announced in Democratic districts in something like 20. Uh, it's like a fraction of where we're at because people really are upset about what's going on, and that may be – the best opportunity to push something forward. I would hope that they'll rise to put the country before their party, but unfortunately I'm I'm not seeing a lot of it happen in Washington and and really that's extremely discouraging as someone who actually believes in the process enough to run for office and serve in office, you would expect that you might be able to get that done and so far unfortunately it's not wor working. Yeah. We just have a, a little less than a minute or a little more than a minute until the the next break congressman, not enough time to put a caller on and it's a hard break at the bottom of the hour. Uh, so quick question. We had uh, Iron Stash on this show yesterday, and I'm sorry, I don't have my one sheet in front of me. I'm, I'm, I, I think I remember his name, but I don't want to get it. Randy Bryce. Randy Bryce. There we go. Uh, and and uh, he was talking about you coming into the district. He sat through uh, at least one of the town halls you did for uh, on behalf of Paul Ryan, <laughs> and, and he spoke very well of you. Um, I was wondering your thoughts on him. Yeah, I, you know, he's been to a couple of them. I'll tell you, this is the first Honest to goodness, real challenge Paul Ryan has had in, in my memory. That, that My hometown is in that district. My husband's um, family lives in that district. I know that district second to my own. And uh, Randy fits the district uh, like a glove. You know, he's an iron worker. Um, that's a district that's been largely deindustrialized. They lost 14,000 auto jobs in Kenosha, about 10,000 in Janesville. This is a guy who can talk to people at a very authentic, real level. And I think he's a very serious candidate. And if he has the resources, um, I think he could give uh, the speaker a run for his money. This is the speaker who wants to get rid of health care for tens of millions of people that aren't asking for it. And uh, Randy's the antidote. Yeah. And he's he's just he's plain spoken, very straightforward, and yet has a clearly a sophisticated grasp, grasp of the issues. I, I was just really impressed. So. Yeah, no, he's exactly what we need in Congress. Yeah, amen. Congressman Mark Pocan with us for the hour, taking your calls. We'll be back right after this break at the bottom of the hour with uh, more of your calls for Congressman Mark Pocan. Stick around. By the way, his website, uh, pocan.house.gov. You can tweet him at Rep. Mark Pocan. He is also the co-chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus.